All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at fine-tuning collision boxes or collision circles on sprites in P5.js, and we're using the P5Play library to set that up. So I've got an example sketch here, and I've already set this up with two sprites to have the background change color when those two overlap with each other. My issue is uh, that change is getting triggered a little bit too early. So I can see here, they're not even overlapping, they're not even touching, but the background is still changing color. Uh, so just quick overview of the code here. I'm not gonna get too in depth because we've already covered how to set up sprites and animations and sprite sheets and things like that in other videos. Uh, I'm setting up some variables here for both sprites uh, and a variable to store uh, the background color. It'll help me switch it back and forth as those uh, overlaps happen. I'm using a preload function to bring in my sprite sheet and my character image, and that just helps with memory management to get things there before the sketch starts. In my setup, uh, I am setting up those uh, two sprites using the create sprite and add animation or add image uh, function respectively. And then on the character, I'm also accessing this friction property and that helps to make the movement a little more snappy, a little bit less floaty uh, as we move the character side to side. Now in my draw block, I'm using that BG color variable to control what color the background is by plugging it into the background function call. This block here is tracking whether or not the mouse is over the canvas. And if it is, we're going to adjust the horizontal velocity of that sprite uh, to get it to move side to side and basically follow the mouse. And uh, the reason we're adjusting velocity instead of position is that it helps with our collision tracking or our overlap tracking to be a little bit more accurate. Now here is kind of the meat and potatoes of how this interaction is working. So I've got a conditional here and the main part is this uh, character dot overlap. And so that method is tracking when the character sprite is overlapping with the laptop sprite like we see here. And if it is, it's doing two things. It is calling this change BG function, which I have down here, that prints a little line to the console and swaps out the value that's stored in that BG color variable. The second thing is when this method is called, it's returning a value and that's a Boolean value. So this is saying true or false, the character is overlapping with the laptop. Uh, so what we want is for the background color to change back to what it started as when that overlap stops happening. So as soon as this becomes false, within my conditional here, I am tracking the opposite of that value. So when that overlap is false, the conditional becomes true and we'll change the background color back to gray. So let's look at some ways that we can actually fine tune this and get that overlap working in a little bit more realistic fashion. Basically, I want that color change to be happening more around here when the character's hand is actually over the laptop. Uh, the first thing I'll do is turn on some debug settings on both of my sprites, and that's gonna let me see the collision boxes and a little bit of other info uh, that goes along with a sprite. So up here in setup, I'm gonna access the debug property of each of these sprites, and this is just a Boolean setting, so I can set this to true or false, and I'll do that for the character as well. So I'm just using the dot syntax to say character.debug equals true. So now I can see on both of these sprites, I get a little crosshair, and that's showing me the center point of the sprite. I get a number, and that's showing me the rendering depth. Uh, it's a little hard to see, but there's a one on top of that laptop and a two on top of the character. And that's the reason why I see the character in front of the laptop is that rendering depth. Now, the important thing I'm tracking here is the uh, green outlines around each of the sprites. So those are the collision boxes. And by default, unless we specify otherwise, the collision box is just going to be the boundary of the image or the animation that's attached to the sprite. Uh, and so we can see when those two overlap, I'm triggering that background change. And because I've got a little bit of extra transparency on that laptop sprite, uh, that's why it's happening a little bit too early. So let's go ahead and do some adjustments to the size and the placement of our collision boxes so that we can get that change happening right where we want it. So I'll first go ahead and adjust the uh, laptop collision box. So I'll start again with that dot syntax and we're gonna say laptop set collider. And here we get a choice of a rectangular collider or a circular collider. 
Uh, I found the rectangular collider works a little bit better for this instance. Um, other times, if you've got a circular shaped sprite, the circular style uh, might work a little bit better. Now we need to specify the offset from the center point of the sprite. Um, I'm going to start out at just 0, 0, so we'll do it right on the center. And then let's specify a width and a height. So I know from uh, looking at my create sprite function, this sprite is 128 pixels wide and 64 high. So I want to make this a little bit smaller than the original sprite. Oops, and it looks like I'm getting an error. I think I want this to say rectangle instead of rectangular. There we go. So now I can see that collision box that's over the laptop is a little bit smaller, a little bit narrower, and the background change is triggering in a place that makes a little bit more sense. I think I still might want to scooch it over just a little bit to the right. So that's where I can bring in this offset. So I have a horizontal and a vertical offset, and I'd like to offset it horizontally, let's say maybe 20 pixels to the right. So now you can see that collision box is over to the right a little bit, and now that change is happening much more in sync with what the visuals are doing. Okay, so that's how we fine-tune collisions on sprites using the P5 Play Library in P5.js.